Welcome back to our final video on basic SQL. We've been talking about a number of the statements available in SQL, the language of the relational database. We're going to continue with that in this video. So why don't we get started? In SQL, three commands can be used to modify the database. Insert, delete, and update. In its simplest form, insert is used to add a single tuple to a relation. We must specify the relation name and the list of values for the tuple. The list of values should be listed in the same order in which the corresponding attributes are specified in the create table command. So when the table was created, the attributes for first name, initial, last name, social, date of birth, I guess that's department, whatever these are, were actually created in that order with the create statement, create table statement. And in this one, we're inserting into employee these values. The values should be listed in the same order in which the corresponding attributes were specified in the create table command when the table was created. So if we said create table employee, open paren, first name, initial, last name, social, date of birth, department, various other information in that order, and then the insert statement inserts the values in the same order, it will work. A second form of the insert statement allows the user to specify explicit attribute names that co correspond to the values provided by the insert command. This is useful if a relation has many attributes, but only a few of those attributes are assigned values in a new tuple. However, the values must include all attributes that are specified as not null and have no default value. Attributes that do allow a null value or default values have been specified for the not null attributes, these can be left out. In this example, second example here, insert into employee and then it included the name of the attributes and then included the those values there. A database management system that fully implements SQL should support and enforce all the integrity constraints that can be specified in the data definition language. For example, in this U2A statement, if social security number is the primary key, which cannot be no, the insert statement would be rejected because there is no social security number value included in it. A variation of the insert command inserts multiple tuples into a relation in conjunction with creating the relation and loading it with the result of a query. For example, to create a temporary table that has the employee last name, project name, and hours per week for each employee working on a project, we can write the statements in U3A and U3B. A table, works on info, is created in U3A and is loaded with joined information retrieved from the database in query U3B. We can now query on works on info as we would any other relation. When we don't need it anymore, we can remove it by using the drop table command. Notice that the works on information table may not be up to date. That is, if we update any of the project, work zone, or employee relations after issuing this 3A, U3B, the information on work zone info may be outdated. We have to create a view to keep such tables up to date. The delete command rem removes tuple from a relation. It includes a where clause, similar to that used in an SQL query to select the tuples to be deleted. Tuples are explicitly deleted from only one table at a time. However, the deletion may propagate to tuples in other relations if referential triggered actions are specified in the referential integrity constraints of the data definition language as we discussed previously. 
Depending on the number of tuples selected by the condition in the WHERE clause, zero, one, or several tuples can be deleted by a single delete command. A missing WHERE clause specifies that all tuples in the relation are to be deleted. Oh my goodness, wouldn't we have to be careful with that statement? However, the table remains in the database as an empty table. We must use the drop table command to remove the table definition. The delete commands in U4A to U4D, if applied independently to the database, will delete 0, 1, 4, or all tuples respectively from the employee relation. The update command is used to modify attribute values of one or more selected tuples. As in the delete clause, a WHERE clause in the update command selects the tuples to be modified from a single relation. However, updating the primary key may propagate to the foreign key values of tuples in other relations if such a referential triggered action is specified in the referential integrity constraints of the data definition language. An additional set clause in the update command specifies the attributes to be modified and their new tables. For example, to change the location and controlling department number of project number 10 to Bel Air and 5 respectively, we use U5. Several tuples can be modified with a single update command. An example is to give all employees in the research department a 10% raise in salary as shown in U6. In this request, the modified salary value depends on the original salary value for each tuple, so two references to the salary attribute are needed. In the set clause, the reference to the salary on the right refers to the old salary value before modification, and the one on the left refers to the new salary value after modification. It's also possible to specify null or default as the new attribute value. Notice that each update command explicitly refers to a single relation only. To modify multiple relations, we must issue several update commands. This language and its variations have been implemented as interfaces to many commercial relational database management systems, including Oracle's Oracle Database and RDB13, IBM's DB2, Informix Dynamic Server, Microsoft SQL Server and Access. Some open source systems also provide SQL, such as MySQL. The original version of SQL was implemented in the experimental database management system called System R, which was developed at IBM Research. SQL is designed to be a comprehensive language that includes statements for data definition, queries, updates, constraint specification, and view definition. We discussed the following features of SQL in this chapter. The data definition commands for creating tables, commands for constraint specification, simple retrieval queries, database update statements. In the next chapter, we're going to discuss a number of other SQL commands. So that concludes our series on basic SQL. Why don't we end this session with a mystery word, basic SQL. Go ahead and check your knowledge. And when you're ready to come on back to begin our second chapter on the SQL language.